Yo, what up? Hey, Donnie, you finished Tears of the Kingdom yet? Yeah, I just beat it last night. Pretty awesome, right? I think you mean pretty awful. Oh, Lord, here we go again. What was the issue this time? Hey, fellas. Good timing, Barack. I'm just about to tell Sleepy Joe how shit Tears of the Kingdom is. You didn't like it? Hated it. Now listen up. I'm about to be spitting Din's fire on your asses. The only thing you're spitting is bullshit. Shut the hell up. This game is just as bad as Breath of the Wild, arguably worse. That's cap. It's no cap. Everything that was wrong with Breath of the Wild is still in this game. The world is still too big and too empty, hell. and they added even more emptiness to the game. What the hell are you talking about? There's more shrines than before, and two entirely new areas to explore, the sky and the depths. Every island besides the starting island is nearly identical. You can grab a few resources and maybe some Zonai devices, but nothing about them is super unique compared to every other island. And don't even get me started on the depths. That place was straight cheeks. I thought the depths were pretty cool, actually. The darkness can get tiring to explore, sure, but that's what makes finding each light route special. Both this game and Breath of the Wild are about exploration. And finally, finding a light route and marking off that area of the map gives a sense of progress to your exploration. That's true, but can you explain what the point of the depths is? The entirety of the depths looks the same, with the same enemies pasted everywhere. There's new enemies, too, like the frocks. Oh boy, the frocks. An enemy that you defeat in a similar manner to the stone talus and is just as easy to defeat once you figure it out. The point of the depths is to collect resources and the simple joy of exploration. The Master Koga side quest is great and you get so many resources like crystallized charges which are used to upgrade your battery. Are you trying to tell me the depths is good because the game forces you to explore it in order to get resources necessary for upgrading your battery? Is collecting those resources fun at all? It's more of a grind than anything, and grindy gameplay is dog shit. Well, you may have a point, but I still enjoyed the depths personally. Have a point, my ass. I guess you just want the game to hand you resources on a silver platter and not have to put in a little bit of work. I know more about hard work than you do, Broke Boy, but hard work in a video game is just tedious. I play games for fun, not to be bored to tears. But upgrading your battery enables you to have more fun in the game. And finally, getting those upgrades can feel like an accomplishment. The sense of accomplishment you get from upgrading your battery is undermined by the sense of despair you get from having to grind out the depths for crystallized charges. Why is the fun I can get from having a larger battery being gatekept by a grind that itself is not fun? I can see why you might think that, but I think the crystallized charges come quite naturally, actually. As long as you're just exploring the depths, you're bound to run into quite a lot before getting every light route. It's not like you need to max out your battery to have a lot of fun, and I mean you don't even need to upgrade your battery even once to do every main quest. So I think it really isn't a big deal. You're only going to max your battery out if you really want to. If it's completely unnecessary to upgrade your battery in order to do the main quest, then why block off the fun the player can have with Zonai devices behind a grind fest? If the only reason to upgrade your battery is to have more optional fun, then why block it off? I feel like I'm playing World of Warcraft or some shit, and Blizzard is fucking me in the ass again just because I'm trying to have some fun in a video game. It gives the player something to do, and a goal to pursue, which is important to have in a game, otherwise nobody would play it. I don't know about that, Joe. While I disagree with Donald about collecting crystallized charges being unfun, I think people would still play the game even if you started the game with the two rows of battery from the start. You're damn right they would. If you weren't napping all the time, you'd have seen all the people on social media sharing their insane creations. People would still love building Zonai machines, and they could pursue that goal without also having to grind to max out their battery. It would be better for everyone if you could just start having as much fun as possible as soon as possible. But then the entire main purpose of the depths would be lost. You're supposed to go to the depths to find those resources. That's what makes the depths so important to the game. That's exactly my point. Without the dog shit grind the depths has, it would be completely pointless because it can't stand on its own as a fun area to explore. I wouldn't say that. I still think simply exploring the depths is fun. Sure, it can get repetitive seeing the same looking areas over and over again, but it's always fun to come across a coliseum or a grove and find some cool piece of amiibo gear or a huge chunk of crystallized charges. I'll admit that it's cool I can get the amiibo gear, but does that alone make the depths good? I don't think so. They could have put the amiibo gear anywhere. For example, the best amiibo set, the Fierce Deity set, you find on the surface, not in the depths. What about the coliseums like Barack mentioned? 
You have to admit those are fun as hell. And they would still be fun even if they didn't have a reward, like a piece of Amiibo gear. They're repeatable and give you easy access to monster resources. The only one that's actually worth anything is the Lionel Coliseum, which you can easily find as your first Coliseum. Imagine doing that Coliseum and it's so challenging and fun. And then every other Coliseum you find in the depths is piss fucking easy by comparison. You're out of your mind. The depths is an amazing area of the game. It's dark, it's creepy, and the enemies provide extra challenge by taking away your ability to heal. Yeah, assuming you don't have a shit ton of sun to lions that you can use to make gloom restoring food. Food in this and Breath of the Wild is so damn easy to come across. Taking damage is basically pointless. The only way taking damage is ever a problem is if you're wearing low defense clothing and you get one shot by something. As soon as you upgrade it, you're never going to be one shot by anything. Food is much too overpowered. I can't believe your Oompa Loompa ass is complaining about food now. So what? You just want to get hit by a hard enemy you happened upon and have no choice but to die? That's ridiculous. Enemies could just drop hearts like in every other Zelda game, or your health could regenerate over time while out of combat like in modern RPGs. Regardless, the enemies that take away your ability to heal are more annoying than dangerous. It's not hard at all to get back your ability to heal. Just teleport to a nearby light route, or simply keep moving on to the next one and it goes away just like that. Why even have this mechanic? And why even add gear that has gloom resistance if gloom is so damn easy to deal with in the first place? Gloom isn't the only thing to deal with in the depths. What about all the bosses you can refight? Isn't it cool as hell to be able to refight the bosses, but in the dark and creepy atmosphere of the depths? Seeing Colgara flying around is enough to send a chill down my spine. Oh boy, I love it when they pad out the depths with fights I've already done. You can't just have a boss rush mode that lets you refight the bosses at any time. Instead, they realize that the depths is fucking empty and boring, so they have to fill it up with the same shit you've already done. Guys, this is going nowhere. We've been talking about the depths for what feels like 10 hours. It's just a mostly optional place in the game that you don't have to interface with outside of the Fire Temple and Construct Factory for the main quest. If you don't like it, just ignore it. Isn't that what you said about Kinstones and Minish Cap, Trump? I didn't expect you to bring up a good point, Obama. Fine. The depths aside, I have plenty of shit to complain about, like the story. The story is by far worse than Breath of the Wild story. What? Which you heard me bitch, which by the way, Breath of the Wild story was also shit. So it's hard to believe they somehow made the story worse this time. Explain yourself. How the hell can you say the story is worse? The memories are absolute dog shit. Remember that memory where there's randomly a puppet Zelda? Sonya and Zelda knew it was a puppet, so why did they lead it into an empty ass balcony with not a single guard in sight? Why didn't they just deal with the puppet immediately? So Ganondorf can teleport behind Sonya and kill her? Are they stupid? Why are you nitpicking the story? It's not like Zelda has ever had good storytelling. Nobody plays Zelda for the damn story anyway. They play it for the gameplay, the dungeons, and the adventure. Zelda has never had good storytelling? Sounds like the words of someone who hasn't played Majora's Mask. Wind Waker had good storytelling too. Ganondorf had a sympathetic motivation. As much as I love Tears of the Kingdom, I'm with Donald on this one. The story was mediocre as hell. You're the only weirdos who care that much about the story. Besides, Zelda turning into a dragon was the most interesting thing they've ever done with her character. Oh, you mean that plot point that got reversed by the end of the game, rendering all the emotional build-up to it completely pointless? Wow, what an amazing story. Come on, bro. Did you really expect them to keep Zelda as a dragon forever? This is a damn Nintendo game. Little kids are going to be playing this. Of course, she's not going to stay a dragon, but it was damn cool nonetheless. But it still would have been better if she stayed a dragon, right? Instead, they chicken out at the end. They can't even have her remember being a dragon for thousands of years to give her that emotional traumatic experience. Instead, it's like she just woke up from a nap. Wow, it's almost like it was a super pointless and contrived plot point that meant nothing and had absolutely no lasting impact. Yeah, that was pretty disappointing. You know what else really grinded my gears, though? Those repetitive-as-hell cutscenes you get at the end of each dungeon where the sage talks about the imprisoning war. Nearly identical line for line, and you get to see it four times, and it's long as hell. Yeah, that was a little jarring, but just skip the damn cutscene after seeing it for the first time if it's such a big deal. It is a big deal, though. It means they couldn't come up with four distinctly unique cutscenes for each area. Or have different sages give you different information that you get to piece together throughout the game. Instead, it's a long-ass cutscene that plays out in the same way. It's extremely disappointing. Okay, but what about the sections leading up to the temple where you interact with the new sages? Well, those sections were pretty good still. Pretty good? 
Sure, some of them were fun to play, but the story was not good even here. Each area is pretty damn similar. You talk to an NPC, and then you talk to the Sage, and then you talk to more NPCs, and then you do something sort of fun, and then you go into the damn temple. They're all the damn same. If your ass wasn't being nitpicky before, you sure as hell are now. No way you can say they're the same. How is defending Gerudo City from the Gibdos anything like riding up the rails of Death Mountain and flying a plane? They aren't exactly the same, but the storytelling formula is the same. You talk to someone, help them out, and then you see a puppet Zelda, and the NPCs stand around and do nothing while puppet Zelda walks away, and then they say, Whoa, was that Zelda? So what? Trying to find Zelda is the entire main mission of the game. It's not crazy for these areas to have that same formula. That's why your quest is to go there in the first place. Yeah, except you can collect all the tears and memories before doing a single dungeon, and you can know that Zelda is the light dragon, but then Link doesn't say shit to anyone about it and just leads them on into thinking that maybe that was Zelda. It's immersion breaking as hell, which is a fault of how the story is presented. Yeah, that's pretty damn whack. Sure, but how else were they supposed to go about it? It's not like they thought every player would rush to collect the memories before doing the dungeons. You could do all the dungeons before collecting the memories. Thus, when you finally find out that Zelda was the light dragon all along, it will be more impactful since you've been searching for her for so long. But it turns out she was right there all along. You're right. It would have been more impactful. So why didn't they wait until after you did all the dungeons to give you the quest to collect the tears? and see the memories. They were perfectly fine with holding access to the Thunderhead Isles until you did all the dungeons. Why not this too? Because these games are about freedom. And it would have been really fucking strange if they restricted your freedom to watch the memories at any time just for the sake of the story, which most players aren't that invested in anyway. Restricting freedom is sometimes necessary in games to give the player a more fulfilling experience. Trump, you just reminded me of something. Let's move away from the story. It's subjective anyway. Fine. Whatever. I wanted to mention the dungeons. While I'm damn happy that actual themed dungeons made a return, they felt way too open and free. I literally just flew around the Fire Temple and skipped 90% of the puzzles. Oh, for God's sake, are you really going to shit on the dungeons now, too? The Divine Beasts weren't even that bad. They had some damn neat puzzles. Then they give you back traditional dungeons that are better than the Divine Beasts and you still complain? Shut up, Sleepy Joe. Barack has clearly been cooking because he's damn right. These dungeons are just Divine Beasts 2.0. The Water Temple was incredibly pathetic. It made the Divine Beast look like damn masterpieces. You've got to be kidding me. The dungeons were great. The dynamic music that changes as you make progress was fantastic. And the music perfectly fit the theme and atmosphere of each dungeon. The bosses were 100 times better than the Blight Ganons that all looked the damn same. And they had banger tracks too. You're right about the music being much better. I especially liked Cole Guerra's theme. And I do appreciate that the bosses are more unique. But remember when we talked about how repetitive the cutscene at the end of each dungeon is? Well, the dungeons themselves are also all repetitive. Every single dungeon is just go hit the switches and then fight the boss. Where are the mini bosses? Where are the small keys? Why are the small keys in shrines but not dungeons? What the hell is up with that? Sure, they follow the same formula, but the atmosphere of each dungeon gives it a unique flavor. And they all have unique puzzles as well. But why bother solving the puzzles when you can easily cheese them with the overpowered abilities Link was given? Especially auto-build and Zonai devices. Sure, reflecting light in the Lightning Temple was cool, but every other dungeon in the game is a damn cheese fest. And even if you do the Water Temple as intended, it's so damn short and easy, it may as well have no puzzles at all. You chose to cheese the dungeons, the game didn't make you. You could have just as easily done it the intended way. But how can you be sure what the intended way is if the game just lets you do whatever? It's easy to miss a puzzle entirely if you're just using the in-game tools you've been given. And why bang your head against a puzzle for even a second if you realize you can easily make something with auto-build to skip past it? If the game wants you to solve the puzzles, it should restrict your abilities while in the dungeons. But that would defeat the entire point of the game. This and Breath of the Wild are about player freedom. Taking away your freedom defeats the entire purpose of the game. That didn't seem to stop them from taking away your freedom in shrines. Some shrines take away all your gear and items completely, and every shrine in the game restricts you from using auto-build. It's almost like they knew auto-build was too powerful and could let you cheese puzzles. So why not take away the ability to use it in dungeons? Or they could have themed each dungeon around one of Link's abilities and restrict your access to the other ones. Wouldn't that have been interesting and fun? Sure, but that kind of restriction isn't what this or Breath of the Wild were about. 
Maybe the next Zelda game can break that mold, but I think they absolutely perfected their goals with this game, and I, for one, think it's damn cool that I have the freedom to go about the dungeons any way I want to. Look, I don't want to sound like a hater or anything. I actually really enjoyed the game quite a bit. There were just a lot of elements that felt really weak to me. I enjoyed building fun machines, I enjoyed exploring the new areas, and Ascend is such a godsend of an ability. But yeah, I do hope the next game does try to break the mold a bit. Breath of the Wild happened because Zelda was stagnating, and it would be a shame if the series stagnated again already. The next game better break the damn mold. If I have to pay $70 again just to play Breath of the Wild 3, I think I'm going to lose my damn mind. Man, I'm sick of hearing you complain. That's all you ever do for fuck's sake. I'm going to go play some more Tears of the Kingdom. I've still got a couple more shrines to do and some Koroks left to collect. Holy shit, you're actually trying to collect all the Koroks? The hell is wrong with you? That shit is boring as hell. Go to hell, Donald, and enjoy being wrong as always. Go fuck yourself. So, Donald, want to watch me play some Wind Waker randomizer? Forget Sleepy Joe, are you trying to turn me into Sleepy Donald? Fuck no, I ain't watching you play that trash game. Seriously, though, why do I hang out with those two?